one. These are the instructions for building a simple machine to construct content during quarantine. Two. Is every writer of prose as jealous of other artists, the painters, dancers, composers, sculptors, ceramicists, photographers, actors, filmmakers, fabric artists, video artists, collages, etc., as I am? Three. Rather than the brick and mortar of words and sentences, whether it's color and shape or positive and negative space or sound and silence or bodies moving in space and time or whatever other means and media they employ, they have the privilege of constructing their art out of essential units tied less intimately, less fundamentally to meaning. Four, that poets can occasionally work their way out of this dilemma using identical elements to prose writers, letters, punctuation, blank space, is almost certainly because they traffic in the dark arts. Five, I am building this simple machine in an attempt to narrow the gap between the frustrations I experience working with prose and the freedom from enforced meaningfulness I envy in other artistic media. Since for all my complaints, I am and will remain shackled to prose, to the walking alongness of it, the left to rightness and top to bottomness of it, as it is well suited to my limitations and because it allows itself to deliver information as if information matters, which it doesn't as often, we, as, often as we think it does, but which it does still occasionally. Six, as I finish this first series and begin a second, take note of the various configurations my thoughts conform to as I run them through the machine for another round in the same non aleatoric order. Seven, sometimes I go through periods of time during which literature disgusts me. Eight, is it the quarantine, the isolation of it, the monotony, Perhaps even the threat of time becoming available that would normally be claimed by routine necessities currently denied me? That brought on this episode of disgust? Nine. While the ratio between what I bring to the book and what the book brings on its own is something I'll probably never discover. Somewhere in that interface between the two, and usually occurring in waves during which the frequency and intensity will be greater for a period of time before eventually receding, leaving me in peace to appreciate literature again. Whatever the ratio, and whatever the duration, and whatever the cause, I have these experiences of picking up a book, reading some sentences, and feeling in my body a physical sense of revulsion. 10. The problem isn't that I stop needing literature at these times, but that I stop being able to read it without the desire to vomit. 11. Here I am in quarantine, wasting this time that could be so well employed in the reading and even writing of literature, all because what would normally be the employment of totally reasonable conventions of genre has become abhorrent to me, and the artificial, artificiality of character a scandal, and the suspension of disbelief not only impossible, but an affront. 12. Now that the various configurations have been displayed, allow me to close this first cycle by noting the two elements of this simple machine that will make their first appearance in the next cycle, strata separated by obtrusions. Those involved with the composition of experimental music find ways and means to remove themselves from the activities of the sounds they make. Some employ chance operations, derived from sources as ancient as the Chinese Book of Changes or as modern as the tables of random numbers used also by physicists in research, or analogous to the Rorschach tests of psychology, the interpretation of imperfections in the paper upon which one is writing may provide a music free from one's memory and imagination. Geometrical means employing spatial superimpositions at variance with the ultimate performance in time may be used. The total field of possibilities may be roughly divided and the actual sounds within these divisions may be indicated as to the number, but left to the performer or to the splicer to choose. In this latter case, the composer resembles the maker of a camera who allows someone else to take the picture. One, unable to read almost anything, I devoured John Cage's silence having first read the book at an artist's residency maybe a decade ago, and then been inspired to take the many, many iterations of a story I was then struggling to write, cut them up into pieces, and reassemble those pieces, many contradictory, reflecting contrary decisions made at different stages of drafting and revision, 
along with cut-ups from the grant applications I had been writing for travel funds so I could do what I imagined was the necessary research for the story, and also along with the cut-up results of the research, which, judging by the results, turned out to be anything but necessary. That I was able to do when I was eventually awarded one of those grants, to construct a textual object which, even though it remains unpublished, at least became interesting again to me for a time. Two, I am building this machine in the hope that, rather than similarly risk one of my current unfinished novel projects, it will provide a safe outlet for me in my prose averse state and allow me to construct prose during quarantine. Because despite some tentative initial attempts at becoming more willing to be vulnerable, imperfect, amateur, etc. in my public stance, I have ideas regarding creative output, perhaps a subject that might be run through the machine in the future, that discourage me from releasing to the public what I know to be inferior literary product, which is why English prose run through the machine might appeal to me as a solution, because any faults in the prose may be the result of the machine rather than operator error, thus protecting the soft shell of my ego while allowing me to participate in, if not the artistic life of the quarantine, then at least the activity of generating content during this period of isolation. Three, as an additional layer of security, someone viewing or listening to this lecture might assume that the less absorbing parts might be attributed to the or operator as orator rather than operator as writer, which would be better as I am far less invested in my capacity to deliver a compelling lecture and even less in recording and editing one than I am in my ability to write a compelling sentence. Four, with at least these two layers of protection, I continue to process my thoughts through the machine, writing these randomly prescribed five sentences between obtrusions, the configurations of which should all be the same, and also randomly determined from among a selection of given possibilities in order to create a stratum of syntactically similar language that will bed within the products of the machine as sedimentary layers lie within geological formations. Five. What I seem to be in search of in my current state is a prose with the possibilities of dance, a language not necessarily severed from meaning, but one not so inherently tied to it, the way each and every one of these words has so explicit a meaning or meanings, has right and wrong positions in a sentence, when what I want is something closer to what Gertrude Stein was able to achieve, which is all well and good for her, having been a genius and probably just able to come up with it out of her head, but isn't so easy for your humble, etc., not being a genius, so instead, in an attempt to substitute engineering for inspiration, I've built this machine, and even I can see that the machine doesn't get me to Stein, though it likely gets me as close as I'm going to get. Form in the plastic arts, according to Lessing, is necessarily spatial, because the visible aspect of objects can be presented juxtaposed in an instant of time. Literature, on the other hand, makes use of language, composed of a succession of words proceeding through time, and it follows that literary form, to harmonize with the essential quality of its medium, must be based primarily on some form of narrative sequence. 1. It's not that Stein wholly escapes meaning. 2. It's rather that she frustrates the reader's desire to hurry past the manifest thingness of her words in our headlong rush to extract what we think of as the essential communicative act that lies within a series of words arranged in a particular order. Three, what I've avoided saying up to now is that the way this machine might work is not altogether dissimilar from how a poetic form functions. Four, have I drifted too far from my subject, which was to be a set of instructions for building a simple machine? Just fucking wrestle. So if, if you're on a wrestling mat and the thing, the thing you're supposed to wrestle comes up, fucking wrestle it. Five, this machine can help prevent you from thinking too much about where you're writing to rather than what you're writing now. It is, in short, the inevitable problem of anybody living in the composition of the present time, that's living as we are now living, as we have it and now do live in it. 
The business of art, as I tried to explain in composition as explanation, is to live in the actual present. That is the complete actual present and to completely express that complete actual present. Six, but is it in fact doing just the opposite, which is make me think even harder, become even more concerned about where I'm trying to write to, having thrown a series of obstacles in my path that need navigating, if I'm ever going to deliver the instructions promised by the title? Seven, did I doom myself from the start by including such a title? however sincere my intention was to deliver on its promise. I am building this simple machine in an attempt to narrow the gap between the frustrations I experience working with prose and the freedom from enforced meaningfulness I envy in other artistic media, since for all my complaints, I am and will remain shackled to prose, to the walking alongness of it, the left to rightness and top to bottomness of it, as it is well suited to my limitations and because it allows itself to deliver information as if information matters, which it doesn't as often, we, as often as we think it does, but which it does still occasionally. Eight, my time isn't infinite, so let me tell you how to build one of these machines. Nine, bring your suffering to the front of your mind. 10, come up with sets of configurations, obtrusions, and emendations. 11, Invite chance to the proceedings in whatever form you prefer. 12. Build strata by randomly determining how many units of each configuration to create between obtrusions, and afterwards, introduce emendations into a stratum, also by chance operation. Incredibly, there was talk of favoritism, of corruption. With this customary discretion, the company did not reply directly. Instead, it scrawled its brief argument in the rubble of a mask factory. This apologia is now numbered among the sacred scriptures. It pointed out, doctrinally, that the lottery is an interpolation of chance into the order of the universe, and observed that to accept errors is to strengthen chance, not contravene it. 13. While how to operate a machine of one's own creation is obviously up to the operator, rather than writing a particular sentence with a given emendation in mind, the intent was that it would be imposed only after a sentence was written and revised. 14. Whether it is after each stratum, between sections if there are sections, after the whole piece has been composed, or at some other time, when to introduce the emendations is up to the operator. 15. After the emendations have been introduced and approved, assuming all the while that the various obtrusions have been selected, doubted, substituted, and confirmed, it is easy to imagine there will be a further round of revision before the machine's work is finished. 16. Neither what particular instructions an operator follows, nor the intent of the thoughts that are run through the machine, nor the manner of chance introduced in the operation of the machine, are as important as that, in the operation of the machine, the operator never lose sight of the difficulty of the procedure and the suffering they undergo in the process. So this particular obtrusion that I've landed on is the only aspect of the machine that is aware of itself. Um, this is because it's the, the final piece of content I'm constructing for this particular machine. Uh, it's designed that way, so only after I've written all the uh, sentences in the original configurations, and I've um, included the the all the other obtrusions, not this one, and I've um, you know doubted and substituted and rearranged and revised the configurations, and then once all that was done, I did the emendations, and that only then do I come back to this obtrusion. So. This is the only, this is the, this is the machine fully aware of itself, fully aware of all the content that goes into it. And this is the only piece that works like that. One. Shall we see what it's like when the machine is working the way it was intended? Art is not difficult because it wishes to be difficult, but because it wishes to be art. However much the writer might long to be in his work, simple, 
honest, and straightforward, these virtues are no longer available to him. He discovers that in being simple, honest, and straightforward, nothing much happens. He speaks the speakable, whereas what we are looking for is the as-yet unspeakable, the as-yet unspoken. Two. That last sentence I wrote forced me to consider whether the machine is best seen in process or in the results of its process, which I could also express by wondering if the operator or the ultimate consumer of these instructions is the one who has the more complete experience of the machine, whether it's the operator who has the benefit of feeling their thoughts being squeezed through the sausage grinder of the machine's process, but as a result, never gets to view the final product through fresh eyes, or the ultimate consumer who comes to the final product with only hints of the procedure that went into making it but who, on the other hand, might experience it as a static thing. Three, as I construct this ultimate cycle, conscious that the rough aqueduct of compulsory language structures obstructs rather than conducts my concepts from author to audience, I am thunderstruck by the havoc luck can wreak as it mucks with the subtle duct work of my accustomed idiom. Still asleep, but, but near the morning there was like a decision I had to make to like enter this dream or not and I I, I, knew I, had, I had the choice and there were three phases and I was like well let's do it I won't uh, uh, I'll skip exercise this morning or something I kind of like made the decision and I don't know if this was phase one two and three or just phase one but there was I woke up with three I kind of like had, had three parables and the second one was about, it was like, this is Tom York of Radiohead. And the idea was that they had, they were apologizing. And it was like, as great as Tom York is, he still realizes whatever. He was apologizing for some of the metaphors they'd used in their songs. Because they contained power relationships in, in them. Um... The, the so the example they used was a song called a nice I think in which there was like an attorney client metaphor I didn't get to the third one and it was like be more like Tom I didn't get to the third metaphor and I can't recall the first metaphor or the first parable But I, I do recall it being, um, like being a little disappointed with it, like it was a little preachy. Four. I have recordings of dozens of dreams. Five. I'm not sure how many of my dreams I am comfortable sharing. Six. You will catch yourself cheating randomness. Seven. This implies you have too much desire to mean something. I boast a first-rate pretext for each time I cheated. I can feel myself taking a, becoming a person, becoming a personality, persona. Nine. Is what you're looking for the same thing as what I'm looking for? Bring your suffering to the front of your mind. I could make these instructions clearer. 11. Clearer instructions might lead to a murkier experience. So regarding the fact that this, this obtrusion, this kind of obtrusion, which I happen to land on twice in this lecture, um, is, the one, is the only one that's written, composed, or constructed you know, with full awareness of itself. Uh, regarding that question, I don't know if I want any aspect of the machine to be this aware of itself. Uh, I'm wondering if this is a problem with the machine that needs to be corrected in future iterations. Um, I will see how, how this plays in the machine and, uh, and consider whether it needs to be uh, substituted with a different kind of obtrusion uh, in the future. We'll see that, how that goes. Well, the place where complying with the machine gets most difficult is as an ending approaches with its demand for a conclusion. 13. What's needed isn't really a conclusion. I just have the, the ending image of like a D 
demon or a devil that I was working with, or the devil, but I, it was like a devil. And, it, and, and the devil or the demon was saying like, we had a good, intense, short friendship or something like that. The idea was like, we worked together really well and we developed like a little friendship. Um, and I'm picturing some kind of coin symbol that they gave me to commemorate it or something, to remember it. 14. Authorize me to provide you with some advice. 15. Don't be stingy. 16. No matter how, use it all now. 17. Don't save anything up for later. 18. Let later take care of itself. 19. Remember what you're here for. One dream I remember. Um, we, but I don't know who we is, are uncovering books from the library. We, we uncover like hundreds, maybe thousands. And we're just ecstatic. We can't believe that there's anything like that out there. Um, obviously, we don't know um, that there's so much more at the library. We think, what is this incredible library thing with thousands of, you know, pieces of information? Little do we know what's really there. I don't know why that got lost, what kind of post-apocalyptic world it was in. 20. It's about time for me to wrap this up. I have nothing to say, and I'm saying it. And that is poetry as I need it. 21. Have I said the substance of what I sought to say? 22. How could I with all these rules? 23. Did I reveal that reading what people seek to say when there are too few barriers to them saying it has come to be tedious to me? 24. Could this be what bothers me about memoir and about TV shows about therapists? 25. Did the instructions come through about the configurations, the obtrusions, and the emendations, about the chance operations, and most importantly, about suffering and the awareness of suffering? 26. Isn't there a better way to end than on a question? <laughs>